Hi there, it's Jeff from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the tips, tricks, hacks, things that you don't necessarily learn about at a hot tub showroom or at a hot tub dealer. All these little things that aren't much necessarily on their own, but they add up to save you tons of time on the care and maintenance of your hot tub and the quality of life and the amount of time you can just spend relaxing in there instead of having to like worry and fuss over everything. I've got 13 tips I'm gonna share with you today. And I know some of these are probably ones you've never heard of before and they're definitely gonna help you. So let's get into it right now. The first one, you probably have heard me mention before if you've watched any of my previous videos, but when you add chemicals to your hot tub, it's important to get them dissipated and thoroughly mixed into the entire hot tub. After all, there's hundreds of gallons in there and you don't want the sanitizer to just be in a portion of it. So the best way to do that is to turn all of the jets and water features on as you're adding the chemicals. That way it's just gonna get everything circulated. It's gonna pull all of that water through the heater and through the filters and really just get it thoroughly mixed in. The only time that's not true is if you're trying to lower the pH of your water. Sometimes we add chemicals to lower that, that pH down or that alkalinity down. And if you're trying to lower the pH, turning the jets on isn't a good idea because it actually raises the pH of the water a little bit. So unless you're trying to lower the pH, do turn the jets on every time you add chemicals. Then along those same lines, the next tip I have for you is to make sure that you leave the cover off for about 20 minutes after you've added those chemicals with the jets on. After all, the jets are going to be kicking everything up and they're going to hit the underside of that cover if you have it closed and that can damage and prematurely age your cover. So we don't need to do that. Just leave the cover off for about 20 minutes after you add those chemicals. It'll take care of it. Then the jets will naturally go off on their own in most cases and you can just close it back up again. The next tip I have for you is that if you go the route of doing a 24-hour cold water soak on your hot tubs filters, definitely have a backup set of filters to put in there while the other ones are doing their soak. You don't wanna have your hot tub go for a whole 24 hours with no filters in there whatsoever. That's a terrible idea because it could easily get cause clogs and it could damage the equipment as well. I prefer, however, to do a soak of my filters with hot water, in which case I only have to have them out of there for one hour. And I don't have a backup set of filters for just that one hour. But the choice is yours. You can do a cold water soak or a hot water soak, but if you go the cold water route, which is 24 hours, have that backup set of filters in there to protect the life of your hot tub. Next, I want you to test and adjust the chemicals after you get out every time you soak. If you do that, it'll be absolutely ready and pristine the next time you're ready to get in. You won't have to test it, check and realize that the sanitizer's gone and you gotta add some chlorine or bromine and then you gotta wait 20 minutes before it kicks in, before you can get in there and soak. So every time you get out of the hot tub, just make a habit of dipping a test strip in, seeing what the levels look like, adjusting as needed, Again, turn those jets on unless you're trying to lower the pH, leave the cover off for an extra 20 minutes, and then it'll be ready to go the next time you're ready to go. The next tip I have for you is to get a tennis ball. And a tennis ball, you just toss it in the water. It's gonna float around, kind of you know, no different than a floater in that sense. It's just gonna float around. But tennis balls, because they got that furry exterior, they're perfect for soaking up any excess body oils and lotions that might be in your water. So I have a wife and three daughters, and you can bet that after any of them are soaking in there, they've got lotions and body oils and perfumes and things like that, probably more than I do, not that I'm stinky but you can bet that there's more oils and lotions and things floating around in the water. And a tennis ball is a great way to quickly and easily just kind of pick that up in the water. It also can, it'll bounce around a little bit and it'll help with that scum line that goes around the exterior of your hot tub, right where the water level is. So it's a quick and easy thing to do. If it gets dirty after a while, just toss it in the washing machine and then toss it back in again or get a new tennis ball. The next thing I have for you, and again, you've probably heard me mention this in some of my videos about summertime, if you've seen any of my other videos, and that is to put your hot tub on sleep or economy mode in the summertime. I live in central Texas. It could easily be 110 degrees here in the summertime, and 
I don't really want to get in water that's 104 degrees when it's that hot outside. So what I do is I switch my mode either to economy mode or sleep mode. Your hot tub may have one or other, or it could have both of those modes like mine does. I'll switch it to that and then I'll bump the temp down to probably about 95. The water temperature still might be 98 to 100, but it's not going to be nearly as hot as if I just left it alone. And what the sleep and economy modes do is it basically only kicks the heater in during the filtration cycles. So that means it's not constantly trying to maintain that water temperature that you have it set to. And even if you lowered it down to 80, if in the summertime here in Texas, the water temperature is never going to get anywhere near that no matter what you set it to and no matter how low you set it. So switch it to economy mode or sleep mode and that water temperature will actually be a lot more enjoyable. You still may not want to get in that water in the middle of the day if it's 110 outside, but it's going to be a lot more enjoyable for those early morning and evening soaks. The next tip I have for you is to not turn the hot tub temperature down after you get out every single time. I see this a lot on Facebook groups and forums that I'm part of, and people always want to know, well, surely after I get out, I should just bump it down. It's kind of like they do the air conditioner. And the reality of it is, it takes a lot more energy from your heater to constantly raise the temperature back up again after you've dropped it than it does just to maintain it. So unless you're going to be gone for weeks at a time, don't change the hot tub temperature unless you simply want it to be lower for your own comfort level. It'll definitely add more to your electric bill if you're constantly lowering it and raising it. And then along those same lines, if you're going on vacation, don't shut off the hot tub unless you're going to be gone, say, a month or more. And then in that case, go ahead and drain it and clean it out and turn the power and shut it down for that entire trip that you're gone for. But if you're just going to be gone a week or maybe even two weeks, just add a little bit extra chlorine right before you go. That way it'll kind of maintain the water chemistry a little bit while you're gone. And then it'll be good to go when you get back. You may have to do some minor adjustments to the chemicals, but you don't really need to shut it down unless you're going to be gone for weeks or maybe you have a vacation home where you're gone for months at a time. And then along those same lines, a lot of people ask about winterizing a hot tub. That often entails adding antifreeze to the water or it might entail draining it completely and shutting it down. And unless you're someplace that's really prone to frequent power outages and the temperature often gets below freezing, you really don't need to do that. A hot tub is great to use in wintertime. I love being in there when it's chilly outside or even uh, last week when we had a freak snowstorm here, I was in there while it was snowing and it was great. I love it. So again, you don't really need to winterize your hot tub unless the power often goes out frequently and for long lengths of time and the temperature often drops below freezing. I even did an experiment not too long ago. You may have seen that video on my channel where I actually intentionally cut the power when it was about 30 degrees outside and I cut it for a day just to see how much the actual water temperature would drop and it only dropped seven degrees. Now you might live somewhere that gets a lot colder than it does here, but I still thought that was pretty telling that the water temperature really didn't drop that much when it was 30 degrees outside. The next tip I have for you, and I do have a complete video on this one if you want to kind of see the whole step-by-step -step process, but I use a product called 303 Protectant, and I put it on my cover. It's kind of like Armor All, but it's a higher quality version of that product. And I just spray it on there, and then I clean it with a rag, and it makes the, the vinyl of my cover soft and supple, and it actually adds years of life to that cover. Eventually, the cover is going to wear out, and I'm going to have to get a new one, but by cleaning that cover, cover regularly and keeping it in as good a shape as possible, I'm probably adding about three years of life to my cover. So get some of that 303 protectant. I'll link to it on Amazon down below in the description and clean your cover just with a, a rag and that protectant about every three months or so. The next tip I have for you is to avoid chemicals at your local Home Depot or wherever you buy your chemicals. Avoid buying chemicals that are labeled for pools. Some will say spa and pool and that's fine, but if it says pool and it doesn't say anything about hot tubs or spas, avoid those chemicals. A lot of the time, this is particularly true of shock, they'll add calcium and other kind of like chemicals that you don't need 
going into your hot tub's water. Most of us have hard water, and, and if anything, we see scale buildup in the hot tub. We don't need to be adding calcium to that water because that's what scale buildup is essentially, is it's calcium. So avoid chemicals that are labeled just for pools. And then along those lines, a lot of people want to know what to clean the hot tub with. And I've had people ask me, well, what about just regular dish soap like Dawn Liquid or you know other cleaning products on foaming cleansers and things like that? And I want you to avoid almost all of those because when they mix with the water, they're going to create foam and it's going to be very hard to get that out of there. Even if you clean it while it's drained and then you wipe it clean, maybe you even rinse it off. Chances are there's still going to be some of that cleaner residue on the acrylic shell. And then when you add the water back in and you add the chemicals to treat it, oftentimes there'll be a reaction and you'll end up feeling the side of the acrylic shell and it'll almost feel like a light grade sandpaper. If you've ever felt that, it's probably from a cleaning product that you used on there. So these days, the only thing I do while the hot tub is empty after I've drained it is I do a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and warm water. And I just use that with a rag and I just kind of wipe everything down and get it nice and clean. That's all I do. Then I give it a quick rinse, fill it back up again, and it's good to go. The last tip I have for you, number 13, lucky number 13, is most of the time you're going to find that you have to top off your hot tub probably about once a month. You'll notice that over the course of about a month, your hot tub's water might go down by one, maybe even two inches. It really depends on the water temperature that you have it set to and what the ambient air temperature is, how often you use it, and whether you use the jets while you're soaking. Those those things can all lead to water evaporation. It's totally normal, happens with every hot tub. It does not mean you have a leak, unless you're seeing a significantly larger amount of water droppage than that. But one to two inches a month is probably fairly normal for most of us. Doesn't mean anything bad. Don't be afraid to top off your hot tub. Just check the chemicals with a test strip after you've topped it off because you probably are going to need to do some minor adjustments. Those are all the tips I have for you. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and I'll see you next week with another video.